I want to show you how to tie this Mayfly merger. This is a Shane Stalka pattern called a parachute merger. It's got an interesting way of forming the wing and hackling the fly that gives it a really unique silhouette. You could change the body color, wing color, hook size to match any Mayfly that you want to. Today we're going to tie it in this sulfur color. For our trailing shuck, we're going to use some wood duck fibers and some Mayfly brown Zelon. You could substitute Darlon in there. For our abdomen, we're going to use a pale yellow turkey biot. For our thorax, we're going to use a pale yellow superfine. For our hackle, I'm going to use a straw colored whiting hackle. And for our wing, I'm just going to use some natural done CDC. The hook I'm going to use is a 2487 TMC. Today we're going to tie this in a size 12. So get that mounted in the vise. For my thread, I'm going to use this light Cahill A dot uni thread. So let's start our thread onto the hook and I'll wind back building up a little thread base. Trim off my waist end. And we'll wind about maybe halfway down the hook bend. We'll take half a dozen wood duck fibers, tie those in. I don't trim off this waist end. So I'll take some of this Mayfly Brown Zelon, mount that in right on top of the wood duck. And then I keep these materials on top of the hook shank, but I wind forward. And this builds up a nice smooth underbody for our turkey biot. So then I just bring my thread back to the tying point for my trailing shuck materials. When you get back here, you can trim your Z Mayfly Brown Zelon. I like to trim it just a little bit shorter than my wood duck fibers, and I sort of don't pull it super tight, loosely hold it, make a cut across, and then I come in here and I just sort of round the edges out, sort of get rid of that really square cut off, make things a little more natural looking. And then I'll take a pale yellow turkey biot. It's worth noting that when you pull these off of the hackle or the stem, you're going to have a little notch. If you tie that notch in facing backward, you'll get a smooth body. If you tie it in facing forward, you get a fuzzy little rib. Today we're going to tie it in with the notch facing backward to get a smooth body effect. So I'll tie that by it in. By the tip, advance my thread forward. These turkey bias are long enough that you can really wrap them by hand. But I'm going to attach a hackle plier. Then wind this forward. As I mentioned, this is a pale yellow color. You can, um, if the sulfurs you're running into are a little more orange, just change the color of this bio. They might be a little more olive. Just adjust accordingly to the bugs that you're running into. I get up my thorax area, I tie off. Trim out that waist end. Clean it up a little bit. Then I'm going to take two CDC fibers, two CDC feathers, and I'm going to match up the tips. And uh, if you're tying a bigger fly, you might want to add a third feather in there. If you're tying a smaller fly, you might want to just go to one, one feather. But I'm going to tie these in, the tips facing backwards, right on top of the hook shank. Trim out this waist end. And we tie that feather in pretty long. Um, because we're going to fold our fo fold these fibers forward and then backward to form the wing. We want to make sure we have enough length there. So I go about one and a half, maybe two times the body. If your wing ends up being long, you can always trim it. So I'll take this hackle fiber, mount it in right next to my wing. Clean up that whole head area in the process. Then I'm going to take some pale yellow super fine. Dub it onto my thread. When I get done building up this thorax, I want my thread to be hanging right at the base of my wing. So I'll start my dubbing, and I usually check the underside of my fly, 
make sure that my abdomen, my thorax, that there's no space in there, that my tying points are all covered up. Like I said, I want to have my thread end up right at the base of that wing. So I'm going to stand my CDC fibers up and I'm going to wrap this parachute style around my CDC. So I'll go up the CDC about three turns come back down the feather maybe three turns the number of turns you're going to put on the fly really should depend on the type of water you're going to be fishing in. If you're going to be fishing heavier water, obviously you can put some more turns of hackle on there. If you're going to be fishing some slower water and you want a sparser profile to the fly, just make a few less wraps. So I get that back down to the base, trim my waist end out, take just a touch more super fine dubbing, put that on my thread, I sweep these hackles back. Now I bring my thread forward. And I got a little bit of space here at the hook eye, but that's what I want because we if we crowd the hook eye on this fly, it can make it a little bit difficult to do this wing process. So then I hold my CDC fibers up and I sweep as much of that ha hackle back with my right hand or my left hand as I can. While I hold that CDC wing up, and I fold that CDC forward tie it down, wind my thread towards the hook eye, and then I wind my thread back towards the thorax. When I get back there, I sweep this whole CDC feather back, and I just tie it down, forming a wing and a little head in the process. Then it's just a simple matter of whip finishing off. So grab my whip finish tool, put a couple whip finishes in there, now I can come in, trim out my thread, and I can tidy up any hackle fibers or CDC fibers that got trapped down in that process. It's up to you how neat you want to make them. Um, but you get this really neat hackle setup, that hackle sort of bursting out from behind the thorax. It gives a really great profile. I've um, had a lot of success with this pattern. So tie a few of them up and uh, give them a try.